So this video covers the lab analyzing a mixture of sodium hydrogen carbonate and sodium chloride by thermal decomposition. So this lab is fundamentally a, an analytical lab where you're going to use stoichiometry to figure out how much of a sodium bicarbonate you have in a mixture of sodium bicarbonate and sodium chloride. And so just a quick summary, um, you're going to heat a mixture of sodium bicarbonate and sodium chloride. You're not going to know the ratio of the two solids, um, but you'll see when we talk about the chemical reaction that um, you will have a change in mass. And you're going to use this mass loss to figure out how much uh, sodium bicarbonate was present in the original sample. And then you're going to use that rate result to calculate the ratio of sodium chloride and sodium bicarbonate present in the sample. So the key here is that you've got a mixture and you don't know how much of each one, and so this is a reaction-based method to be able to figure out how much you have. So this really addresses the fundamental question of how much stuff do I have, one of those fundamental chemistry motivators. So in terms of the uh, things you're going to learn how to do, uh, you're going to learn how to use balance again. Uh, today we'll be using Bunsen burners. Um, you're going to learn how to balance chemical reactions. Uh, or you're going to use balanced chemical reactions to do your analysis, um, you're going to end up using this mass analysis to get a quantitative amount. So this is a quantitative lab. And then finally, this is, a, this is really a uh, chemical reaction that you're doing. Um, it's sort of a simple reaction. It's a thermal decomposition. So conceptually, it's simple. Um, but uh, you're going to use this chemical reaction then to actually get uh, information that you can use. So again, we're using a commercial lab manual, um, which isn't totally going to match up with how we're going to do it. So there will be a couple changes. One, I'd like you to work in pairs, so you'll work with your lab partner. Um, and in this lab, the manual describes the use of crucibles. And those are nice, but they're pretty hard to clean out, and it's really hard to analyze. So we're going to use aluminum pans instead, and instead of a, holding them, we'll have like little screens in place. So you'll be able to see this in the movie. It's, it's a really straightforward substitution. And then finally, during the cooling steps, they use a desiccator. Um, we're not going to use the desiccator uh, to, to make sure there's no water present. I think water won't be a major problem uh, for us most of the times that we do this lab. So I think those will be the, the minor changes, but everything else will be the same. So we'll repeat the safety issues uh, when we get to the pre-lab, but you know, mainly we're using Bunsen burners today. So uh, you're going to heat things up, things are going to be hot, so don't burn yourself. It's the most common lab injury. You think of all the, the terrible things you can do yourself, most people just burn themselves like they do in the kitchen. So don't uh, touch things that are hot, use tongs, let everything cool down, don't get too anxious again. Thing, And you will be working with open flames, so don't set anything on fire, yourself, paper towels, trash can, whatever you might be. So fundamentally, the reaction that we're going to observe is going to be the reaction of uh, thermal decomposition of bicarbonate. So if you heat bicarbonate, uh, it turns into sodium bicarbonate. It turns into sodium carbonate and gives off uh, water uh, as well as CO2 gases. Okay, So this would be the, the standard balanced reaction. So you should be able, using standard stoichiometry, to be able to figure out if you started out with a certain amount of sodium bicarbonate and you heated it completely to sodium carbonate, how many grams of sodium carbonate you would have left. You could assume the water and the carbon dioxide will float away, so the only mass left will be sodium, bicarb sodium carbonate. So this should be a fairly straightforward calculation. But let's say instead we have sodium chloride. Now sodium chloride, when it's heated, it melts potentially, but we're hopefully not going to melt it. But if it doesn't really react the same way that bicarbonate does. So let's say we have a mixture of one gram of sodium bicarbonate and one or half a gram of sodium bicarbonate and a half gram of sodium chloride. Okay, so all of the sodium, and we heat it long enough, all of the sodium bicarbonate is going to get converted into sodium carbonate. Now, we're starting with 0.5 grams of sodium carbonate, so in this case, we're only going to get 0.315 grams of sodium carbonate and chloride, on the other hand, doesn't change whatsoever, so it's going to all still be a half gram. It was a half gram to begin with, as a half gram afterwards. So then if you just look at how much is left in the pan, you'll see that the total is actually 0.815. So this, it's composed of the sodium chloride mixture as well as the sodium carbonate mixture. Okay, so this is conceptually the, you know, I think it's pretty easy to see here, but it gets more complicated because then... What we're going to do in the lab then is we're going to do the reverse. 
we're going to start with an amount, but we don't know the ratio. And then we're going to get some amount of loss. So we're only going to be able to measure the total. We're not going to be able to measure uh, how much of each one we have. So then we will have to use our deductive reasoning then to figure out how much bicarbonate we had to begin with um, based on how much we lost. And so this is really the, the big conceptual leap, okay, um, is, to figure, is, to, is to figure this out. So this will be one of the things that you're going to have to do for the lab workup is to then go back and then figure out what your potential uh, uh, ratio was based on just really two observations, how much you have at the beginning of the reaction and how much you have at the end. The experiment itself is pretty straightforward. So you're going to get a mass of these aluminum pans. Um, and after you get the mass of the aluminum pan, um, you can then add a certain amount of bicarb. There'll be two mixtures there. Just pick one of them. Uh, there'll be two unknowns. They'll have different ratios of, of sodium bicarbonate and sodium chloride. Um, so you'll use those mixtures and you can weigh that out. It should be somewhere in the gram range that goes into the pan. Okay, so, so you'll have mass in the pan. You'll want to make sure that it's well spread out over the uh, whole pan, so kind of jiggle it a little bit. You don't want it all clumped at one end. You want to break up any of the small pieces to make sure that those are broken up. Okay? Now the key part of this lab is to get the right Goldilocks amount of heat. Okay, so the problem you can have is that if you get it too hot, then you'll melt the sodium chloride, uh, and that will just complicate factors. Um, it shouldn't matter, but it ends up mattering because of the amount of water and things like that that are, are present. Okay, the other thing is you don't want to get it too cold, because if you get it too cold, then you don't have proper, um, you, won't get it, you won't be able to heat it fully to decomposition, and you'll get some sort of mixture where you'll get some bicarbonate, some carbonate, and some sodium chloride. Okay, so the key is to kind of regulate how big sort of the glowing disc is on your uh, screen. So after you light your Bunsen burner, you should aim for something that's somewhere between a quarter and a half dollar. Almost the diameter of the pan, uh, maybe not quite as much. Now it's, uh, the, the lab has some air currents in it from the air conditioning unit, so it can make it a little bit hard. Okay, so this disc I have here is probably a little too small. I should have lowered it just a little bit to make it work a little bit better. So, um, but, you know, this, is, this will be sufficient. Once you get your glowing orb the way you want it, you just go ahead and put the pan on to the burner and you wait. You can shuffle it a little bit, um, but, you know, it's probably going to take somewhere around 10 to 15 minutes for this to heat. Okay. Now, once it's done, you can uh, let it cool uh, completely, let it get to the point where it's, it's not hot to the touch anymore. It can still be warm to the touch, and you'll get a mass. And then you'll be able to do that. You should do this two or three times. You can use the same pan uh, a few times. Now, if you one, if you're not sure, you can always heat it a second time and see if you lost mass anymore. I think in the manual they do it like three or four times. So that's a possibility. Finally. Um, all the solids can be washed down the sink with a lot of water, and it should, because uh, everything, will, there's no real hazardous materials here. So again, the key steps are making sure that you have that Goldilocks amount of flame. Again, it should take probably about 15 minutes. I would do that, and then you know, if you want to heat it a second time for a few more minutes and see if you lose mass, uh, that would be okay. Now, you don't want to get it too hot. Um, you know, putting it really close to the Bunsen burner because then you'll melt the sodium chloride, which will obscure your results.